Tengu was one of those shows I grew up with as a kid and I remember absolutely loving it. I also didn't quite remember just how weird and quirky it could be. Tengu was created in 1990 by Otmar Guntman and Erika Brueggemann, with the original series running up to the year 2000. The show was actually originally created in Switzerland, but due to none of the characters speaking any official language, the series was easily distributed abroad. The penguins did talk to one another, but it was more in this blabbering sim-like dialogue, referred to as penguinese which I find quite hilarious. Though we don't know what the characters are saying, you can still understand of what's being said. In this scene for example in episode 2, Pengu is loading up some packages onto a post vehicle and you can see that his dad's like, hey yo be careful with those packages there you little shit, and Pengu's just like, yep yep sorry dad, and proceeds to be more gentle. In saying that though, there are parts which are down to pure speculation. I have no idea what they gave this poor guy, but from the saddening music and the elderly look of the penguin, I'm assuming it's a letter informing him that his wife has died or something? It's such a random moment in the show and it's never brought up again. Interestingly enough though, despite being easily translated abroad, there does appear to be a complete audio redub on the US release, where the opening theme is changed, music, sound effects, and even the penguinese language, and yes that includes Pengu's iconic Noot Noot, have all been redubbed. I honestly don't know why this was a thing as I couldn't find much information online. My assumption would be that it's down to some licensing issues from the original? If anyone has any more information on it please do let me know in the comments. Either way it doesn't really change the show too much, but I must admit, I do prefer the original opening theme over the US one. For being a kid stop motion show, the animation was actually quite fluid for a typical children's show. Other shows tended to suffer from this limited stiff like look, but with Pengu a lot actually went on, having a lot more energy with an almost cartoon like feel to it. But my main draw would be with Pengu himself, who for a character in a kid show, could actually be quite a dick. Though good in his core, he certainly wasn't shy of being rude, conniving, and quick to lose his temper. But that's part of what made him so fun to watch. You don't want a goody goody protagonist who can do nothing wrong, you want to see someone who can be just as big of a shitbag as you. It was relatable, and most importantly, it was entertaining. And it was these traits that seem to have kept Pengu popular in internet culture, most notably for his trademark Noot Noot. Though where Pengu has fallen favourably on the internet, the same can't quite be said for television, as the little penguin's rude behaviour has resulted in numerous scenes having to be censored, or just flat out having the episode banned altogether. And we're going to be going through them all in this video. From those considered too rude, too outdated, and just downright horrifying. Right after this video sponsor. Geology is a 9 time award winning men's skincare company which offers a simple and effective skincare routine customised just for you, which can help you fight acne, reduce oiliness, prevent wrinkles and compact dark or puffy under eyes. Just take the 30 second diagnostic quiz link below and Geology's dermatologist will design a regimen just for you, where you will then get a complete trial set sent to your door. This includes the everyday face wash, the face morning cream, the repairing night cream, and my personal favourite, the nourishing eye cream. Specifically designed to help alleviate those dark circles under the eyes which have been the result of my appalling sleep schedule. 
after which you can continue with 90 days worth of supplies of the products that you found most effective. If you'd like to try for yourself, head to geology.com and take their free skincare quiz to save up to 50% on your 30 days trial, or just click the link below. That's geology.com or click the link below to save 50% on your 30 day trial. Thank you so much for watching guys, now back to the review. The show's controversies actually begin in the very first episode. Great start there, Pengu. During which Pengu's ball is stolen by two other penguins, and as Pengu is trying to get the ball back, one of the bullies smacks Pengu on the head, whilst the other causes him to trip over on his ball. These two scenes were removed in the UK and US in 2003, due to being dubbed too violent for a kid's show. Which in comparison to some of the other kid's shows we've looked at in the past, this is really nothing. And having these scenes removed doesn't really make sense as to why Pingu would need a plaster on his head later on in the episode. Despite being removed from airing, the scenes would remain intact on the US DVD releases. It wouldn't be too long after that Pengu would find his next controversy in episode 2, or episode 3 depending on where you look. The episode focuses on Pengu having to sit on an egg whilst his parents are out hanging the washing, or skin I guess. Pingu quickly gets bored of sitting on the egg and decides to get up and dance instead. Interestingly, on the original version, Pengu is dancing to the woodpeckers from space, whilst in the US version, the song is just the US Pingu theme. Whilst Pingu is dancing, the egg wanders off and Pengu attempts to catch it. The parents are alerted to the commotion and come storming in. The egg is safely captured, but Pengu is seen hiding in a cupboard in fear of punishment. On the BBC VHS release, this scene is cut due to it potentially mirroring a self-harm attempt, and perhaps also hinting that Pingu's parents would have been violent towards him. Which, spoiler alert, they can be. Fortunately, the episode ends on a happy note, and in the following episode, the egg would hatch into Pingu's little sister, Pinga. Yeah, Pengu had continuity, who would have thought? A bit further along the line we have episode 6, which begins to explore the dynamic between Pingu and his new sister Pinga. Pingu starts becoming jealous of her, and so desperately tries to get attention from his mother. Apparently the shot where Pingu pretends to be sick was once cut in the US, because some viewers found it inappropriate. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure what scene they're referring to, Maybe this one where he puts the blanket over his head? And the scene with Pengu shutting himself in the toy box was also deleted, presumably to prevent kids from mimicking it. Which I mean, yeah, if kids are stupid enough to climb into tumble dryers, I can see him climbing into a toy box. It gets pretty hot in there, and those dryer fans can break your bones when they get going. Cheers, Sonic. Next up is episode 14, which was a particularly controversial episode in which Pingu is misbehaving at the dinner table, which fun fact is where this mean template comes from, Pingu's bad behaviour escalates which results him in ruining dinner, so as punishment his mother ends up spanking him, which leads to a standard Pengu running away from home. Even though the spanking itself wasn't done hard, the action itself was still considered controversial. Surprisingly though, this wasn't the only controversy this episode suffered from, as whilst Pengu is out, he encounters a bunch of scary looking ice sculptures, which not only frighten Pengu, but apparently a lot of younger viewers too. And so as a result, the episode was pulled from airing in the UK in 2005, and would later be banned from airing in the US, though would still feature on DVD releases. Episode 19 is probably one of the more hilarious episodes to be banned. The episode starts with Pengu being a dick to his sister, where the two then head out to a local store and drink a large amount of juice, which causes Pengu's sister to inadvertently wet herself. Pengu orders her to go home and use the potty, but Pengu himself soon finds that he needs the loo as well. He tries to get to the toilet, but can't quite reach it, and so ends up peeing all over the floor. I must admit, on rewatching the episode, the whole scene of Pengu harassing his dad to get off the toilet is still hilarious to me.
After being made to clean up his piss, you not gonna wash your hands there, Pingu? Pengu goes outside and gets some stilts in order to try and take a dump? I'm really not sure. Which for some reason ends up in a further yelling from his mother. No son of mine will sit down while he pisses. Seeing how sad Pengu is, the family comes up with a solution and build him some steps. This just looks massively impractical for anyone else who wants to use the loo. The episode ends with Pengu now happily sitting on the toilet and well, yeah, you can see why this one would potentially be banned. With its heavy focus on toilet humour, and apparently also the scene of the store is controversial, as some people perceived it as Pengu drinking alcohol. I personally don't see that, but either way, the episode was pulled from airing and banned on VHS releases, though it would still be available in the UK and Canada. And then we have the final episode of season 1 to be banned, and is quite possibly the most horrific and infamous. The episode begins with Pingu's mother reading him a bedtime story. Pingu soon falls asleep and his mother leaves the room, where some strange things begin to occur. Pingu is awoken and frightened, where his house floats away and his bed comes to life. Soon Pingu actually seems to be enjoying himself, and things appear to be going quite well. That is until... <laughs> what in the actual fuck? So a mysterious walrus appears in the background and begins tormenting Pengu. Also was not saying anything, but just laughing away, and even begins to eat his bed. What were the team smoking when they came up with this design? Even for a show that has its occasional weird and dark moment, this is really out of left field. The walrus has such an uncanny and unique look that it's not seen anywhere else in the show. Most of the other characters are simplistic and cartoony, whereas this walrus possesses a much more detailed and realistic design, blended with some human-like traits which gives it a really unsettling appearance. Most notably, its sinister human-like laugh, along with a glaring set of human-like teeth. Reminds me of that creepy fish I've seen posted online. Not to mention that whenever the walrus appears on screen, we get this strange theme accompanying him. Unsurprisingly, the episode was banned in the UK in 2003, due to the walrus being too frightening and disturbing to younger viewers. Yeah, no shit and thus never got a release on VHS. Interestingly enough, however, despite the episode being banned in the UK, the episode still aired in the US, and was later also released on DVD. I guess Americans just aren't creeped out by realistic looking animals with human-like teeth. Season 2 starts off strong with its first episode already being deemed controversial. Whilst playing at home with his sister, Pengu runs into a table which causes him to injure his beak. The injury then causes Pengu to bleed, and blood is shown throughout the episode. The use of blood caused it to be banned in some countries, including Poland for the first time, though surprisingly, it remained on air in both the UK and the US. Episode 5 was probably banned for one of the more hilarious reasons. In this episode, Pengu meets a female penguin, and the two quickly become friends. This episode was banned in the US due to the penguins kissing at the end, which was seen as too inappropriate for a kid show. I don't know, personally I'd be more concerned with Pengu staring straight up her ass, but that's just me. Also, if they think kissing is bad amongst penguins, then oh boy do they have a long and disturbing rabbit hole to dive into. Next we jump all the way to Season 3, Episode 9. An episode which was also banned for the slapping of Pengu, but unlike in the previous censorship, I can kind of see where they're coming from with this one. In this episode, Pengu wants to go out and play with his friend, but his mother forbids him as he still needs to complete his chores. As the episode progresses, tensions rise between the two, and eventually his mum loses her patience and ends up slapping Pingu across the face. This scene was edited out by the BBC in the UK, and the episode was removed entirely from US airings though it did remain in Canada. Unlike in season 1 where the spanking seemed pretty tame, 
In this one, I can definitely see why it would be edited out. Spanking a child is one thing, but striking them across the face is a whole different level. Not to mention it forces Pengu to hide away all day, and it looks like he also drew some sad looking artwork because of it. Yikes. Along with the beatings and that creepy walrus, Pingu is going to need some serious therapy. The final episode to be banned was in Season 4, Episode 22, with probably one of the more unique and questionable reasons for banning, and that's with Pingu stereotyping as a Native American. Now from my understanding is that back when this episode aired in 2000, it was commonplace that kids would play cowboys and Indians. Being from the UK, I don't really relate to this game as we'd instead play cops and robbers, but I don't think the episode was made with any ill intent, and was more done just to showcase a child's typical play activity. I mean, I'll take Pengu playing this over the hammer and chisel game that he planned on playing in an earlier episode. Either way, the episode was banned in the US, and even Japan. But interestingly enough, can still be streamed on Amazon Prime, so perhaps since then the ban has been lifted. And that's the list of banned and censored episodes of Pengu. If there were any that I missed out or you felt should have gotten a mention, let me know in the comments below. And also let me know of any other controversial kids shows that you feel deserve a video in the future. Thank you so much for those of you still here watching, and until the next one, take care and pleasant dreams.